Hi, today we are going to make something called tomato powder. Now tomato powder um, is it's essentially dried dehydrated tomatoes that are ground up that you can use all winter long to get that fresh tomato flavor. In the winter, it's really hard to get a fresh tomato flavor. And if you're destined to use the grocery store tomatoes, they're pretty pale, they're pretty uh, nondescript. They really don't have much flavor. This is a way to get full flavored tomatoes. And if you stick around until the end, I'll give you some wonderful ideas, at least 10, of how you can use this tomato uh, powder in the winter. So this is part of our preservation series and it's really easy. I'm gonna walk you through it. And if you want more details, you can go to our blog, Farm to Jar, and there's a whole post with tons of details there. But let's get started. So first of all, you need the tomatoes. Um, I'm starting with five pounds of tomatoes and they're all different kinds. Um, I grow heirloom tomatoes uh, for a living. I sell at the farmer's market. So I have a lot of different kinds. This one is called an Aussie from Australia. I only grow heirlooms. This is, um, let me see. This is a Roma that's called Opalka. It's my favorite Roma because a lot of Romas don't have much flavor. They're meaty and they're great for sauces and everything, but they don't have nearly the flavor as a, as a juicy, round, red tomato. But the Opalka does. So I'm, I put in a mix here, San Marzano, Opalka, Aussie. I've got a little brandy wine, a little carbon. Anyway, you get the picture. You can use any kind of tomato you want. Um, so we're gonna slice these up. We're gonna put them in the dehydrator and then uh, dry them for about, um, I don't know, 12 hours at 135. Then we're going to grind them and you will end up with a tomato powder that looks like this. All right, so I'll walk you through the steps real quick. And, um, and then at the end, like I said, I'll give you some ideas for making some great recipes uh, with tomato powder. And I'll also let you know how to make tomato sauce and tomato paste with the tomato powder. It doesn't, the beauty of it is, well, there's a lot of beauty. One of the, <laughs> one of the great things is it doesn't take up very much room in the pantry. You could just keep it in a um, in a jar, a tightly sealed jar in the pantry, and it'll last for years um, as long as it's tightly sealed and as long as the tomatoes are dried all the way. You don't want to get them dried part way, or they will mold. And if you think they're not dried all the way, keep them in the refrigerator to prevent mold. But that's one of, one of the pros of tomato powder is you can keep it uh, in the pantry and it doesn't take up much space. Um, the other pro is that it tastes good and it's easy. And what else? I don't know. I'll think of it as we go. Let's get started. I'll show you how to make it. First of all, let's slice the tomatoes. Um, I'm gonna start with the opalka. Rinse your tomatoes, dry them off, and then we're gonna put them in the dryer at about, well, first you wanna slice them about a half an inch. Okay, about that thick. You don't need to seed them. You don't need to core them. You just slice them, okay? So I'm gonna slice all those tomatoes, but here you can see this one is, this one is uh, fairly meaty. Um, I'll do one of the round, little round ones too so that you can see what they look like. Five pounds should give you about, no, I don't like that one. Five pounds should give you about a half cup of powder when it's over. So, okay. So there you go. There's the slices. This dehydrator is a Nesco dehydrator. I've got some in here that have dried, previously dried, so that you can see how crisp they are. They need to be really crisp or they won't go through the grinder. If they're pliable at all, they're not ready. So you can see, see how they crackle? Can you hear that? Ah, crackle, okay. So those 
that's what they look like when they're dried. And so they, you just, whoops, lay them in the dehydrator. They can be touching, but you don't want them overlapping. And then uh, I'm gonna chop up all the rest of these tomatoes. I'm not gonna make you watch that. <laughs> Put them in the dehydrator, turn the dehydrator on to 135. Put the lid on and wait. <laughs> so this, I, uh, mine take probably 12 hours, sometimes 15. It's a slow process. Um, the dehydrator, I would, ref this is an American Garden Master. Um, I think they're, they're, they've changed to Nesco now, but just get a dehydrator that has temperature control and if you really want to go fancy, get one with a timer. Uh, those are pretty spendy. They're like $300 or so. And I think this one was 200. But you can just add trays as you go and it's well worth it. If you get one of the cheaper ones, um, they don't dry as, uh, you have to watch it a lot because they don't dry as evenly and you're constantly messing with it. So it pays, if you're gonna do a lot of dehydrating, get a good dehydrator. Uh, Excalibur is considered a really good one. I just got a commercial one um, that's called Ivation, I think. <laughs> I'll put it in the, in the notes below. I can't remember the exact name of it, but it seems great. I've only used it once so far. All right, so they're in the dehydrator, turned on to 135, and um, when they are this crisp, you just take your coffee grinder, Okay, I plugged the grinder in and I ground up these dried tomatoes. And this is what the powder looks like. Um, you know your own coffee grinder, so just grind it until it's a powder. Um, I suppose you could use a, a, a finer or a coarser grain, but this is the way I like mine. And then to store it, um, you want to store it in something that is very tightly sealed. These canning jars work great because they are tight. And now you can put it in the pantry and it will last years. Now, some of the lids that come with these that are plastic, um, air does get through. So if you can get this kind of uh, jar and lid combination, that's great. Okay, now I promised you that I would give you some ideas for how to use the powder. I'm gonna um, read a few from the blog post that I did um, because I can't remember all of them. But of course you can use it to make tomato paste, tomato sauce, tomato juice, um, and, uh, and enchilada sauce. And you make those by just adding one-to-one -one ratio of tomato powder to water, hot water. And then you start simmering it and the longer you simmer it, the thicker it's going to get. So if you want a paste, you're gonna add a little bit less water and simmer it a little longer. A sauce, one-to-one, -one, um, simmer it until it's the consistency that you like, okay? Now, other ways that you can use it, there's tons of ways. Some people will add a little um, shredded Parmesan cheese to it and sprinkle it over popcorn. Some people will put it um, sprinkled onto hummus, which is nice. Uh, you can always add it, keep it by your stove and put it in uh, pasta sauces, soups and stews and anything that you want to add that umami flavor to. Um, I usually add like about a teaspoon. Now, I will say when you're using this, it has no salt in it. So um, make sure that you salt whatever dish you're doing. It really brings out the tomato flavor a lot more. If you want, you can store it with some salt in it because salt is a preservative and it will just keep, uh, it'll keep it dry and preserved even longer. If you do that, just remember when you're making something and it calls for salt, that you don't over salt because you'll have salt in the tomato powder and salt in your recipe. So be aware and you'll be good. Now, some other ways. Um, you can put it into pizza dough, mix it with some herbs and uh, fold it right into the dough. You can, this I like this one, um, rehydrate it with heavy cream and add it to your scrambled eggs. 
So I do a low carb diet, so I do a lot of heavy cream. Um, and I do a lot of scrambled eggs. <laughs> so that one's really good. You can use it as a rub on roasted vegetables if you're vegetarian. Put it on a sheet pan dinner, make some Spanish rice. Let's see. Oh, if you want, some people will just um, buy those pale uh, wannabe tomatoes at the grocery store and slice them, put some tomato powder on it to make it really taste like a tomato. And then you could use it on a burger or anywhere. Um, same with salsa. You, if you make salsa and you use canned tomatoes or you have some frozen salsa and you wanna um, up the tomato flavor of it, sprinkle a little tomato powder on your salsa. Okay, what else? Well, we've got the, the Bloody Mary, of course. Um, add it to meatloaf, add it to deviled eggs, um, add it to a little mayonnaise and then you're gonna have a really creamy, great sandwich spread. Uh, what else? I have a whole bunch of these, and if you want, uh, you can go to farmtojar.com and look at, look at the tomato, the post for tomato powder, and you'll see the whole list of them, plus the details on how to make it. But I think that's a good place to go for now. Um, our preservation series continues. Um, check back in and see what's next. I think it's going to be chili oil. All right, cheers.